Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Seeds of Success, brought to you by Cubica AMF and Dottie San Martin and Jane Nephew. We're your hosts today. Dottie, we have a great show, right? Because you um, really brought to, to light this uh, title of engagement and motivating your employees, engaging and motivating them. You wrote a great blog post about it. And by the way, if you want to read that in full detail, you certainly can. Bestextras.com, B-E-S-X-T-R-A-S.com. You can look it up and find it there. Um, we're not going to give you exactly everything there today. We're going to take a little bit of a deep, deep dive a different way. Dottie, talk about... Help us understand why you want to motivate and engage your employees. What's the what's the benefit there? I mean, I know, but yeah, you know, I, out yes, for sure, Jay. Well, you know, your employees are a huge asset to you. You said um, they're your number one asset. They, absolutely, they are because they can determine, you know, the service that your customers receive, and they're also a big expense for you. And so yeah. you want to, as with interest. any other asset or large expense, you want to be mindful of that. And you want to be doing what you need to do to, to make sure that they're taken care of. Right. Um, and so one of the things that people are struggling with is to make sure that their employees are delivering the best service that they can. And in order to do that, you want your customers, you want your employees, excuse me, to enjoy what they're doing. You want them to feel valued. You want to um, give them the feeling that they are important because then and only then when they start to feel that way, are they going to want to help you get your business to where you want it to be and to deliver the service that you want and you, that your customers deserve. Right. And so that's really, um, and, and you know, what comes to mind normally for people when you talk about motivating employees is money. Yeah. If you ask them, what can I do to motivate? Oh, pay me more. If I made, you know, $40 an hour, I would be, you know, that's what they, that's what they think. But we know, we know because we've not paid our employees $40 an hour and got amazing customer service out of them. Sometimes, sometimes not so much, but also when you look back at some other companies who are really good uh, at that, people say, Oh, I want to go work for Google or Apple. I know these are tech companies and I know they're like Silicon Valley things, but the reasons that people wanted to do that kind of stuff was not because of the money. It was because of the culture that was created That's by these right. companies. And in their defense, they were more of a creative type environment and they could maybe have a lot more lax. You know, they could have foosball tables and cater lunches. You may not be able to do that with uh, an hourly employee at your bowl, but what can you take from their methodology and their mentality and apply? You're in the business of fun, people. You're in the business of making people have fun. So why can't your employees have fun while they're servicing their customers? Okay, so Jay, right? I'm going to take this back a step because okay. really, that needs to be one of the, the very first expectations that you set out for that is, your right. employees is you expect them to come to work wanting to have fun because that's the culture that you're wanting to create. And I will say, you know, I love digging into the younger generations. And we recently had a guest on uh, our Facebook group, Beyond the Frame Live, uh, Richard Jackson. And he talked a lot about the culture, the Gen Z culture and what they wanted and what their expectations were. And a lot of the things that that generation uh, thrives upon are things that you can incorporate into the culture that you create at your bowl. And by that, I mean, they're looking for a purpose. Right. They're looking for technology that can be utilized to make their job easier. They feel like if they're given the right tools to do their job, you know, the technology, the, the, the resources to do their job, that that shows that there is an investment in them. Right. And those are some of the points you make in your blog post. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it now and you, you talk about incorporating technology, um, equipping employees with the proper tools to do their job. That's also another thing that maybe we're not stepping back and looking at fully. Uh, yeah, you've got, you know, a register and pens and you've got your note, you've got, but is that all they need? Maybe they need other things that are not tangible. Those are just because it's an object doesn't mean that's the only things we're talking about there. That's right. And, and Jay, some of those things, you know, 
are are simple things. Again, we're not talking about things that are going to cost an arm and a leg. No. We're going to we're talking about things that are available to you. Um, when you have a sales team in your party office, for example, and maybe they struggle with picking up the phone and calling somebody um, for a birthday party or whatever, look on the internet, find those tools. There are resources available to help build confidence. There's webinars that you can watch about, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing a sales call. There's yep. all sorts of tools that are available that you can find and then you can provide them uh, or give the employee a way to have, gain access to those things. And those little things are really the things that are important. And the other two things that you touched on and you put them back to back in your list is providing recognition and respect. That's what those Gen Zers want. They yep. want to know that they're uh, respected, that they're appreciated in their job role. Recognition doesn't come necessarily with a price tag on it. Um, That's right. It doesn't cost anything to tell someone that you appreciate the job they've just done and, or how they've just handled that situation that it could have been very difficult and they made it seem super easy. And then ownership for the staff. And and that goes back to, I think, giving them the tools to do their job. When I was a center manager, I would tell my employees, the frontline employees, you do what you have to do to make this right for any customer, no matter what the situation is. Do not let me hear you say, well, let me go check with my manager so I can find out what I can do. No, you handle that right then and there. Then you come to me and you say, here's what I did. Here's how I made it right. If I have issues with that kind of behavior, or I say, look, that was a little excessive. We didn't need to do that. Or you should have done X, Y, and Z. That's a learning moment. But what the difference is, is I give them ownership to do that. Okay. And they quickly learn where the line is, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, what's right and what's best for the customer is and sometimes the customer just tells you, look, all I really need is a refill on my soda. We'll call it a day. Oh, you didn't get the pizza? Let me refund you. Okay, great. And I'll give you another pizza. We got it for you. Oh my God, the people fall all over backwards, right? We've been the recipient of types of uh, customer service like this, but we've also been on the other end where you're like, nobody cares what happens yeah, here. They're, they're negative Nancy's, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah you're, you're so spot on, Jay. Um, and you know, I want to go back to the, the recognition part because okay. there's a lot of different ways that you can recognize someone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're um, good at this. This is, this is your A game right here. And, and you know what? This should be fun for you as an owner or a manager. It should yeah, be, you can make it fun. Your creativity can shine through. But to do something for that person or even a group of people, maybe you have an event that just went off and it was fantastic and the staff just pitched in and, and came together and you want to do something. So maybe you treat them to a special meal in the break room. That That's you exactly treat, right. Or something along those lines. Um, so recognition can come in many different forms. I've got some uh, sometimes I see that they'll do a, a shout out in social media and they'll recognize a particular employee or whatever the case may be. So be creative when you start thinking about what you can do. The other thing that I want to mention is, you know, this needs to be contagious. This culture that's going to be developed in the center needs to start with the person at the top. Right. It can't so, come from the bottom up. It has to you be need to, unilateral yes. everywhere. Yes. You need to enjoy your job. You need to expect to be listened to when you have things that you want to talk about, be it, you know, a general manager going to the owner. And that's the same behavior that general manager wants from their leadership. Uh, same thing. From a business standpoint, if you're the owner of a business and you speak to someone that you are, uh, that's your vendor, you expect for some of the things that, that we're talking about right now to be done. You expect them to listen to you. You expect for them to uh, support what you're saying and you expect them to give you the tools that you need to be able to better do your job. That's just human nature. And when you can do that and when the people that you are associated with it do that, that's when this culture is formed. And that yeah. culture is a lot better place to be than an environment where everybody is just kind of doing their own thing and going in their own direction. And the dictatorship rule. I often said, look, 
I didn't really create this culture. My employees kind of created the culture. I just allowed it to be created and steered it where I had to, because certainly they, they would take it to an extreme where I was like, man, that's not going to work for us. Come back here. But when you give them that lateral ability to kind of develop that culture along with you, rather than being told what the culture is, they have that sense of ownership in there. Then they're more part, more apt to be like, no, we all think this is the greatest thing. That's why we do it this way. You want them to have that feeling. You Absolutely want them you to do. want to be involved. And they're and proud to work there. Yes, yes, for sure. And you know, the um, when, when you start seeing this work and you start seeing, you know, uh, the employees enjoy what they're doing and the level of service just naturally goes up and the culture is better. They're going to start initiating things on their own and it just becomes, we used to do a huddle uh, before events at work. It was like a pep rally. Yeah. But I did it because I was really excited when we had, you know, these events coming in that were multi-thousand dollar events and you've got all these people and everything has to go off without a hitch because mm -hmm. a lot's riding on it. A lot. You want to make sure your staff members are engaged and they're having fun. So we look like probably like high schoolers, but we would huddle in this huddle. And if I ever forgot to do it, they would remind me that, hey, we, what about the huddle? And we would get together and we would we would talk about, hey, we're going to knock this one out of the park. We're going to do this. We're, we basically like a huddle on a basketball game or a football team. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> it what was you fun need. for us. We had a blast doing it. We all gave high fives at the end, which now would have to be an elbow bump. But nonetheless, uh, you know, it worked. We yeah. did that instant motivation right then and there with just a quick little huddle. Um, but it was important to them. And you set the stage before the event even started, which is key, right? Um, we did a whole show on expectations, right? We did that yes, we did. Uh, a little bit back. Mm -hmm. So setting clear expectations is really part of this kind of process too. Um, if your ex employees know explicitly what you expect from them, it's easier for them to accomplish that. So then your culture becomes self-fulfilling in that aspect because you've set yourself up for that but if you don't do those types of things if you didn't have the huddle and you hoped people got together and just did what you've told them they're supposed to do that's one thing you might not have gotten the same results right that's but exactly that quick right. little you know feel good moment and reminding just here and there like don't forget we're going to do x don't forget you're you're on for the at the at the game two you're bringing out the pizzas and that you know you're gonna you're on refill duty for soda pitchers you know we used to do that kind of thing also but we didn't have the huddle but that was all about the expectations so you're not throwing those out the window people when you're creating this culture it's not a like let's just Come to, you know, whatever happens. That's right. Now, you talked about expectations, Jay, and you talked about expectations in a little bit different way. I'm going to take this one step further. Okay. Because uh, you referenced the blog post. Uh, the blog post talks about 10 ways that you can motivate. Yes. These are ways that have, uh, these are especially uh, something that motivates the younger workers. So. You're talking millennials, now, Gen Zers. Yes, yes. But these are their expectations. Right. So when you marry their expectations with what you expect out of them for service, you now know what they expect out of you, and you know what they expect out of you know what they expect, and vice versa. Then that's when these things start to happen, and that's when you start to get that culture. Yes, and you you're, you're making me think something really interesting. Um, I just did a presentation uh, recently and I did a little bit of research for this presentation and it was, it was really poignant when I got to the point about showing the different generations and the breakdown and what the age groups were. And you know, alpha's the, the newest one. They're like eight and under and nine to 24 ish is the Gen Zers. Um, so some of those have now become young adults and are now in the workforce, right? And I said, I made it a point to what we both know as marketers that each generation has their own individual opinion of what a workplace should be and function mm -hmm. like, and they work differently. Think about the clash baby boomers had when millennials entered the workforce and we were all working in offices and millennials came in and they were like, oh, we want the lights off. And I'm like, who, the, what, who works with the lights off? What's wrong with you people? But 
this was the culture that they, this was the way that they grew That's up right. and this is what they responded to. Well, it was really a, a start because there was a missing generation in there, you know, mm -hmm. the Gen Xers weren't in there. Um, and then, so now when you look back, I said to these people that I was giving the presentation to, I said, you know, I know all of us in this room here are at best millennial, but mostly Gen X and, and, um, and baby boomers, right? And you're looking like, oh, Gen Z, those kids, da, da, da. I go, but guess what people? you have most of them working for you right now. And in 10 years, they're all going to be your employees. So if you don't resonate with them and their needs, that's right. then you're not going to get the most out of them. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. I want to get the most out of my employees. So I may have to tailor what I expect from each generation and how they're going to deliver right. that to them. There's the magic right there, I think. Right. But, you know, if we're trying to attract also, we need to also be mindful of the audience that we're trying to attract when we're in the hiring process. So there's, Correct. that's a whole, that's a whole. And I know we're going way deep, but I got it, all, it. it all plays a factor. It, it, it really does all play a factor. But at the end of the day, when you start to create that culture and you start to see things start to gel, you know, a lot of this stuff is going to be, uh, it's going to be noted and, and it'll apply to all age groups because yeah, it will, that. but then it's also things that can help you like technology. People, employees are used to getting their schedules via a text message now, right? And you know what? It makes it easier because the apps now let them switch times and you don't have to be involved. I'm yeah. out of that. So, you know, I think in the long run, it's just going to help in so many different ways. So, you know, Jay, this, this has just been a great subject. I know we try to keep things short and sweet, but, um, uh, again, there is an in-depth view of this on the Best Extras blog, if anybody wants to go to that, but it's so valuable and some very minor changes in what you do in your business can really have a huge benefit to the, to the bottom line and to the experience that your customer has. And if the customer is having a better experience, we all know what that means. Yes, we do. Um, and, and if so you have a good experience with your business, then you know I don't need to, uh, you know, worry too much about what I'm doing because my culture has uh, gotten right. to a point where it's a little bit on autopilot, and I can step back and just watch you it. You trust. And you build that trust as a result. Every now and then, where I need to, yeah, build trust. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Absolutely. What a well, great Jay, this has been a this has been a topic that is really exciting for me, and as, as we both could do, we could talk forever on this subject, but. You know, as always, if anybody ever has something they want to bring to our attention, our email addresses are uh, on the screens below yep. us. Um, so certainly feel welcome to reach out to us if you are if you have a question or and want to give us your two help. cents on a topic. Um, we like two cents. Um, yes. So, you know, you, need our help, you know, we've got services we can provide for you. Maybe you're having trouble motivating your employees. Maybe you want to work one on one with us or work as a group with us. Come on board. We're, we're happy to have you. And Jay, for our audio only listeners, um, the uh, to reach Jay or I, it's very simple. For Jay, it's J nephew at cubicamf dot That's the letter J. And uh, for myself, it's D San Martin at cubicamf dot us. We'd yeah. love to hear from you. Uh, well, Jay, thank you for for chatting with me today on this topic. It's been really fun, and for our viewers great. and our listeners. I hope that you will take at least one or two of these things and take a look at what you're doing to create the culture that you want in your center. Yes, ma'am. We all know we can grow our business one happy one customer. Happy customer. Or one happy employee. Employee. Oh, good job, Daddy. I at love that. At a time. Good job. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye -bye. We'll see you next time on Seeds of Success.